A 49.5% of eligible voters across the country say they will not vote to retain their MPs in the 2020 elections. That's according to a joint research by the University of Ghana's uh, Political Science Department and the Conrad Adena Foundation. Kwachi Afre Nyama has more on the following report. The research, which was conducted from March to part of June 2019, saw the research team interviewing 100 respondents from each of the 275 constituencies. Now, to break it down further, they did this on an electoral area basis with latest data from the Electoral Commission. They had 20 respondents in five electoral areas per constituency, and they focused mainly on the role of MPs in their constituencies. Although the primary duty of MPs is to make laws, lead researcher Dr. Isaac Ousumensa revealed that most constituents are more interested in seeing their MPs undertake developmental projects. We are told that MP is supposed to be an advocate for development. Nationally, 50.8, more than half of Ghanaians are telling us that MP, your role is to what? Develop. You are advocate of development. That is the role of member of parliament. Last week, there was a program organized by the Carlos Bishop Community. The first deputy speaker was telling us his experience of going to his constituents, whereby he met the people and discussed issues about parliament with them. They were not interested. They were interested in the school classroom when you are building it. One of the major concerns raised by constituents was that many MPs don't visit their constituencies. I'm told that you need a lot of money to be able to visit their constituencies. But the truth is, whether you like it or not, members of parliament, we expect you in the constituency. Now, we have information in some electoral areas and some constituencies that since some members of parliament were voted for, they have not done what we call thank you tour. Going back to say thank you people for voting for me to serve you, some members of parliament are yet to do that. A member of the research team, Ketri from Pond, said 49.5% of constituents across the country said they won't vote for their incumbent MPs in 2020. According to Ketri from Pond, experienced lawmakers enjoy more support from constituents than first time MPs in the legislature. It is the most garbage that people will think people say they should go, they should go, they Thirty or so Mugabe's, those who have spent four years or more, one tenth of them, the people support them and they should go again. On the other hand, of the one twenty first term MPs, about eighty, they have people say they should go again. Some members of parliament who were present during the presentation indicated that the research is a great source of feedback for them. Take for instance that assuming my constituency that they've not been seeing me. If you want to win again, what will you do? I will start going there. At least it tells you what your people think, whether uh, they are justified to think the way they think, or whether uh, they appreciate your work or not, uh, whether you have a difficulty that they don't know, whatever it is. According to the findings, Education Minister Dr. Matthew Pukuprempe is the best performing minister in President Ekufuado's administration. Without a doubt, 18 months is a long time in politics and a lot could happen within that period. And certainly, no certain member of parliament would want to dismiss the outcome of this research done by a team that accurately predicted the outcome of the 2016 general election. For TV3 News, my name is Kwachi Afreniyama. On here in the studio, I'm Stephen Antti. Let's uh, get quickly onto the telephone lines and speak with the uh, team uh, leader of the team, team lead and a senior political science lecturer at the University of uh, Ghana. All right, let's get onto the telephone lines. We now have the uh, team lead of the uh, research, uh, the political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, Dr. Isaac Ozumensa. Good evening, Doc. Thank you very much. Uh, good to have you. Good evening, my brother. So this research of yours, can you tell us expressly what it sought to achieve? Please, can you come a bit clearer? I, I I'm asking, a question, sir. right, so I'm asking if you can tell us expressly what the research sought to achieve. Oh, the main objective of the research is to be able to know the performance of the members of parliament from all the 275 constituencies in Ghana from the 
perspectives of their constituents. That's all. That's all right. And well, of their constituents, yes. Ryan, we're told that you, you sampled uh, about 11 respondents uh, from all 275 constituencies, correct? We sampled 100 respondents per constituency. Per constituency. So this is uh, through a random uh, sampling, kind of, so that, for example, if you went to a house one, you don't necessarily have to go to two. You go to five or ten, six, and come back to one. That kind of situation. No, what we did was that we selected the electoral areas first. We to cover every constituency is divided to electoral areas, and we selected electoral area five electoral areas per constituency, and then we interviewed twenty people per the electoral area. And in that electoral area, when we went to the electoral area, we leave the first five houses and then go to the sixth house, and then still leave some time space in between and go there. There are some uh, electoral areas that are made up of three villages. You make sure that all the three villages are, are, are integrated in that study that you are doing at that point in time. Well, I, know, I know that the University of Ghana Political Science Department over the past uh, few years have engaged in uh, researches of this kind, most of which have been extremely accurate. But there have been questions raised about the representativeness of the sample you use and coming up with this figure of 49.5% uh, deciding that they will not retain their members of parliament. That's, that's a bit like 50%, more, almost half. That's very worrying, isn't it? It is very worrying for all of us, then, especially if you have more of the first-time members of parliament, people are not retaining them. It's very worrying for democracy of this country. And, and you, you, you get the sense from the outcomes of your research that many of the respondents you spoke to perhaps didn't have a fair understanding or appreciation of exactly what an MP is elected to do. Some thought, and they still think, that uh, the MP is supposed to champion developmental projects. This is erroneous, isn't it? And if that is how the majority of the 49.5% uh, you interviewed think, then uh, we're not doing too well with information getting down to the grassroots for people to understand really what the MP does. No, you see, that has been theories of democracy that MPs are not supposed to do development projects. This is why we learned in O-level government, A-level government, and in the Department of Political Science as a student of political science. But in reality, MPs in Ghana are supposed to provide development projects because the basis of campaign is on development projects. So if you campaign on development projects and you come and tell us that now the MPs are not supposed to do development, it, it has not wash here or there. Because fundamentally, when a member of parliament is campaigning, he's going to tell the constituents that I'm going to build this classroom for you, I'm going to build this road for you. So when you are elected, you, you cannot move away from that side of development. Uh, objectives are not part of my work. My work is to make laws, my work is to represent you and scrutinize legislation to be appropriate for you. These are all your, in, in reality, on the ground, we expect MPs to lobby for projects. We expect MPs to be able to go to the ministries and champion causes of the interest of the people in their constituents. They expect MPs to be able to help them get jobs, either in the police service or immigration service or uh, forestry attendance or whatever it is. So MPs' role is not only about making laws, they're also seeking the interest of the constituents. So, so, so do you get the impression from the outcomes, I, I keep referring to the outcomes of your research, uh, because uh, if we don't speak to the outcomes, then we, we are as, as well speculating. Uh, did the outcome of the research perhaps give you the indication that the respondents are becoming more matured and more uh, perhaps appreciative of the essence of uh, local local level uh, participation in, in politics for which they are now becoming more forceful in their demands. I don't know whether I put that right. Yes, you are right. My brother, the truth is that the time whereby we voted for member of parliament or we voted for government and then the government tells our story and they go and sit down four years, they come, we renew their mandate. I think it is past and gone. Ghanaians are becoming more understanding of the issues. Ghanaians now know what MPs promise and what the MP is supposed to do and what it's unable to do and compare the MP to the adjoining constituency and see what the adjoining constituency member of parliament is doing and compare to other uh, members of parliament that are also ministers or not ministers, either in opposition or not in, in opposition, what they're able to do and what they are, what they are unable to do. 
So uh, now citizens or if one voters are really matured now and they really expect members to be held accountable. And that is the way we have gotten to now. And so we are very happy about that. So would you say the the uh, the, the research uh, points to negativity or positivity because uh, some of the MPs I've, I've spoken to obviously are worried uh, because they get the sense that perhaps they haven't done enough education uh, for people to appreciate what they're doing and also putting the blame squarely on the doorstep of the NCC and all of that. Would you say this is good, good news? I mean, the, the research outcome is good. I think it is good news for Ghanaians and it's also good news for members of parliament because we have still so many months now to go to the elections in 2020. We have still some time now for political parties to conduct their primaries. So if you're a member of parliament and we voted for you in 2016, and you have not seen the need to go back to the people to say even thank you to them or visit them, uh, then you have the opportunity now to do that and tell yourself that, hey, my brother, if I don't work very hard, I can lose my seat. I don't think that it is good for the Republic of Ghana and therefore democracy in Ghana that every four years we lose a lot of members of parliament. It's not good for us. So we have, it's a wake-up call for them. It's all for them. They can do what is needful. And if they're able to do that, I am very optimistic that we may retain most of the members of parliament now. All what right, uh, Dr. Isaac goes to Mensa. We're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Isaac Osumensa is team lead of uh, research into the performance of members of parliament. Let's move away from uh, that research to some other stories. The basic Education Certificate Examination BC has commenced with some 90,584 candidates comprising 43,273 uh, males and 47,311 females sitting in the Greater Accra region alone. Wendy